morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about how can force change epigenetics. So, based on the paper published in M MBOC yeah, by Shiba Shankar Group. So, before starting the manuscript, I'm going to share some essential basic knowledge about the epigenetics. So, here, when you look at the when you look at the DNA, DNA, they are originally composed of this structure. And then, using this histone protein and then DNA complex, we can call it nucleosome. And then nucleosome, they are formed in bees on a string. Bees on a string like string and bees like that. And then this is called gene under active transcription. And then this bead on a string, they are more coiled. And then they are shown like that, which means this is a less active gene. And then after further adding scaffolding protein, they formed again and again and again. And then this is a finer form when we look at during mitogen, mitosis. So during the cell division, this is very highly condensed chromatin structure. But when they are not under cell division, maybe the cell in the nucleus, they are changing the DNA from this active transcription or less active transcription formation. So when you look at the chromosome in detail in BioTM, so as you know, the heterochromatin is dark part and then euchromatin is light part. So when you look at the DNA BioTM, also you can see light part, which is euchromatin, and the more dark part, which is heterochromatin structure. And then centromere, and the tel telomere located in the edge. So yeah, this is the basic structure of the chromosome. And then in case of heterochromatin, dark part, more condensed, and stain dark, and then high AT content, and very gene is very poor. And then most of gene is silenced. But in euchromatin, less condensed, and then gene expression, expressing, and GC content high, stain light. So this is only you can observe this structure in mitosis, but before or ending mitosis, they are uncoiled, and then they are, they are sometimes they are looking at loci structure or more light uncondensed structure. So how the nucleosome is consist of? So nucleosome, they they consist of mostly eight protein called H2A, H2B, H3, H4, and then each one has two. So total eight. And then lower of the H1 is a little bit different from the others. So anyhow, when you when you want to say nucleosome means DNA plus eight histone protein. Size is around 10 nanometer, and then H1 is somehow outside position. So from the DNA, nucleosome, and this string on a bead structure, and then a, a six chromat chromatosome per ton, and then they can form like solenoid structure, and the more condensed, and then they look like looking like that. So when we look in detail about the histone protein, H2A is considered a core histone along with other, and then core formation first occurs through the interaction of two H2A molecules. Then H2A forms a dimer with the H2B, and then the core molecule is completely when H3 and 4 are also attached to form a tetramer. tetramer. So why people looking at H2A more often, which means this histone 2A is a starting position. And then when histone 2A is binding with histone 2B, 
and then later H3 and 4 are attaching. So DNA folding, H2A is important for packing DNA into chromatin. Since H2A packages DNA molecule into chromatin, a package process will affect gene expression. H2A has been correlated with DNA modification epigenetics, so they are determining the overall structure of the chromatin. So when you look at this YouTube video, uh, you can more easily understand about how histone protein form the nucleosome. The role of the H3. H3 is the most extensively modified of the five histones. The term histone H3 is an important protein in the emerging field of epigenetics where its sequence variance and variable modification stage are thought to play a role in the dynamic and long-term regulation of a gene. So I'm going to show you in detail. So this is histone 3 tail and this right histone 4 and then depending on yeast, drosophilia, human, this is some rider. Rider means adding something. This is eraser. Eraser means remove something. So here, uh, most of the rider and eraser is for, for methylation. So when you look at in black, you can see this one, two, three, one, two, three, which means when the from mono to di, di to tri, this rider is involved in histone three K four. So this eight rider is involved. Some some is unknown, but someone is already labeled. And then in case of eraser, for the human, this is involved. So especially this jarred one A P C D is involved from try to die, die to mono. And then when you look at the K9, K9 is most maybe four K and 4927 is mostly studied histone methylation site. So also you can see this SUV39 is highlighted rider. And then this CHDM, KD, KDAM, some family is involved in erasure. And then when you look at the another, so this is more specific in terms of acylation, phosphorylation, and methylation of histone 3 tail. So this is a uh, so acetyl transferase is rider or methylation and then kinase is phosphorylation and then demethylase is remover. I'm uh, sorry, so acetyl transferase acetyl rider and then methyl transferase methyl rider the T acetylase and T methylase is remover of the eraser of the acetylation and methylation. So this is all histone three epigenetic modification site. So when you look at the two, this is only methylated. Four, some can be acetylated and some can be methylated. Six, only phosphorylated. Nine, methylated also acetylated. Something like. So when you look at the both acetylated methylation site, 4, 9, 27, and 36. So there is why many people looking at 4, 9, 27, 36 for their epigenetic study. And then in case of a removal of a writer, you can find some of the example. So when you look at uh, this histone 3, 9, or 4, erasure, so KDM4, A, B, C, D is mostly involved, another KDM. So when you look at the KDM, which means methyl erasure. And then this SUV is methyl rider. In, in case of acylation, CERT, CERT 1 to 6 is involved. Uh, sorry, this is eraser of the acetylation group. And then this cat ABC is and P300 is involved in acetyl rider. And then how this epigenetic modification changed the gene expression? 
and how they are involved in physically. So this is not 100% determinant, but anyhow, in case of histone 3 K4 methylation 1, they are function in activation of gene, so this is located in enhancer site. In case of K9 acetylation, involved in activation, as you know, all acetylation can activate gene, but methylation sometimes activate, sometimes depress, depend, depending on their site. So in case of acetylation, they are involved in enhancer or a promoter site. And then when you look at the K9 methylation 3, this is involved in repression, and then they are mostly detected in satellite lipid, telomere, and pericentromeres. But uh, nowadays, also this is involved in another like gene site, not only this, but also other site. So, and then uh, before starting this paper, uh, I want to share the methodology how they uh, calculate the compression force. So interestingly, uh, they are using this fibroblast and then the cell are allowed to attach for three hours and then on the top of the cell, they put cover slip and then they paraffin wrapped the metallic nut, metallic screw and then approximately two gram and then they put this metallic nut on the cover slip. So basically like that. This is a media, this is a cell, and then after putting the cover slip on the top, and then they put the metallic nut, two gram. And then the cell are uh, experienced the force for one hour. A uh, one hour placing. And then in this experiment, when they recover the cell, they remove this knot and then wait for another one hour. So, and then how they calculate the force? So this is uh, weight after consideration gravity, they obtain 20 millinewton from the two gram, yeah, two gram, they yeah, multiply gravity to any millinewton, and then they subs subsidize some buoyant force, which is weight of volume or media displaced. So when they put uh, by the single knot, one ml of the media is displaced. So and then this mass equivalent to one ml media is one to force of the knot are submerged in the media during the experiment. So from the initial, uh, this two gram, and then they substrate this 0.25 gram of the nut, which are already immersed, submerged in the media, and then multiply the gravity, and then divide by the cell number. And then each cell are given this uh, 2.5 micronewton. Yeah, but somehow I found out they miscalculate this number because when I calculate it, uh, this is obtained, but anyhow, they have some mi little mistake about the mathematics. Anyhow, 2.5 micronewton per each cell. So using this concept, also you can change your load and then calculate the force for the single cell level. And then in case of, they also evaluate the foresi of nucleus, how they evaluate? Maybe it's a little bit different from our methodology. So for the reference, I'm going to share that in detail. So first, they stain DAPI. And then this is the original, their DAPI stain images. And then they, cha they are change the threshold using also method. So maybe they change the threshold of images that they found out this foci. And then they combine them together to see the only foci structure, so which is called histone <coughs> condense. Yeah. From the binary mask, they obtain these histone condensed images. So in detail, uh, yeah, this is 
The resulting with the total intensity value are some project and total intensity is measured. So this is only for histone content in nuclear foci. And then this is not only foci, but also other um, nuclear side also detected. So in bottom line, uh, while they are checking the, this condensed, they always use G-stack images per subspace 0.5 micrometer and then they capture all DAPI stain images and then merge them together. So for the nuclear foci, histone content, they can observe like that. And then after adjusting the threshold, also they can some project image of the nucleus. And then they are using um, special methodology, how they determine the threshold of the images. So this is a G-stack of the DAPI. And then, interestingly, they are using, for determining the threshold, mean of this 40% of maximum intensity and the minimum intensity plus their di difference between two multiply 0.35. So this actually, this bracket is a little bit uh, typo. So when you look at in this, you can understand more easily. So threshold 0.4 maximum and the minimum plus this value. And then using this, they can average these two value like that. Using this methodology, they can continuously set the threshold of the histone content. So this is the right exam. But when they use not the, that previous number, when they use 0.3 and 0.2, they said more unrecognized histone contents are detected. And then when they increase the number, 0.5 and 0.5, less detected. So they found out somehow this 0.4 and 0.35 is enough to determine the histone content. And then uh, I can see some new uh, protein in the nucleus involved in histone condensation, which is CEMPA. Actually, CEMPA is mostly detected in the centromere of the chromosome. So this is centromere chromatin. Centromere means when you look at this chromosome, this is a centromere, yeah, this side. So as you know, centromere, they always involve in microtuber because the chromosome should be divided in the two sides. So when they form this uh, microtuber and then canotocore C, M, P, C, A, and B are involved in centromere chromatin. So this is C, M, P, A is involved in swapping at the centromere. But here in, the, in this article, there also detect the CMPA in heterochromatin content in nuclear foci. Yeah. And then when you look at this chromatin structure, so heterochromatin and centromere chromatin, somehow CMPA chromatin is involved as a violet color. And then most of the hypo less isolated, but more methylated things are here in the centromere. So this is center part, heterochromatin is pericentromere part, and the other chromatin when they form this chromosome. Interestingly, this CMPA is known to replace the H3 protein in the centromere part. So originally, they form like eight protein, but in centromere part, as a replacement of histone 3, CEMPA is involved. And then, after that, uh, they are formed like that. So, pericentromere, s 3 k methylation 3, more, centromere, CMPA, and then K4 methylation 2, and then microtuberize involved. So, and then when you detect the CMPA and B, yeah, when you see the chromosome, yeah, you can see the CMPA B is really detected in centromere part.
And then they suggest another component of the protein, heterochromatin protein 1. Heterochromatin protein 1, it consists of highly controlled protein in the or organism. And that this function includes gene repression by heterochromatin formation, but sometimes activation of transcription, regulation of other binding cohesive com complex to centromere, blah, blah, blah. So, and then uh, transcription arrest, maintenance of heterochromatin integrity, gene, rep gene repression at a single nuc nucleosome level, and gene repression by heterochromatization of nucleomatin and DNA repair. So most of the HP1 is known to <coughs> deactivate the gene, especially in the heterochromatin structure. So this is formation of the HP1 here. So HP1 seems to interact with numerous protein molecules with different cellular function in different organisms. So histone 1, 3, K9 methylation, histone 4, methyl transferase, DNA transferase, and the methyl CPG binding protein. So when you look at this, HP1 is involved in H3K9 methylation, and then this um, rider of the methylation, EGH2 and SUG, is involved here. So this is one of the key protein involved in heterochromatic structure, and then they are well known to interact with H3K9 methylation 3. And then sometimes K9, K27 methylation as well. So in heterochromatic structure, they position like this, DNA, bead on string structure, and then especially H3K9 methylation 3 side, HP1 is involved. This is heterochromatin and uh, gene depression state. In case of euchromatin, this HP1 is gone, and then they are more deep apart each other, and then this is called euchromatin. But sometimes chromatin here, this is a heterochromatic structure, so they form. And then when they, in euchromatic structure, this HP1 is departing from the H3K9 methylation 3, and then another protein, when they are involved, yeah, they are involved in some gene expression sometimes. So in this article, they all this kind of new, something new protein in the supplementary data. So, they are, first, this is an example of the CEMPA protein. CEMPA is, as I told you, involved in nucleus foci, heterochromatic content from the metaphasic chrom chromosome. So this is normal, not normal, some rectangular. So basically, they culture the fibroblast, two different geometry, rectangular and circle. And then, with loading, without loading. So they only suggest four groups. So when you look at only this rectangular geometry, this CMPA is exactly detected in uh, heterochromatin content here in, normal, in without loading condition, but after loading, one hour, they, only, they always detect, fix the cell after one hour of loading. The CMPA is more number detected in heterochromatin. Rectangular, in case of circle, more detected, right? But in case of HP1 alpha, it's exactly same position of the heterochromatin content. Green, DNA, by the DAPI, red, HP1 alpha. But when you see the foci number, this is large. But somehow, when the load is, is applied, foci area is enhanced. But the total number looking decrease. So you can continuously observe this exact match, but volume of content is in, enhanced in loading group. So they check this how this histone content node a change. So this is control, loading, recovery, one hour. Okay? Loading means one hour loading, recovery, one hour loading, one hour recovery. So the total number of the histone content decreasing. And then after 
recovery, remove the nut, load, there also go back. Volume, increasing. And go back to normal. And then CEMPA number per histone content node increasing. So here we can say that totally the histone content number is decreasing but volume increase, which means they are merging together during the loading. And then this is uh, in terms of histone content node. And on the right panel, this is about the nucleus itself. Nucleus height decreasing. Nuclear volume also decreasing. Why? Nuclear projection area don't, don't, don't change. So area change, area no change, height decreasing, so volume decreasing. Hmm. So this is their finding. But after recovery, all are going back to normal. And then they checked histone K9 methylation, 27 methylation, and histone K3, K9 isolation. So K9 methylation 3, they are highly enriched in loading. And then another 27 methylation also enhanced, which is a marker of the repression of the gene. So heterochromine structure, but while S3K9 isolation decreasing in loading. So I will, I will show you later how they link these three phenomena together. So this is their image. So in case of histone 3 k 9 methylation 3 they are highly exactly the same location of the DAP and heterochromatic content here, right? Here, 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 or similar. But K27, they are mostly peripheral positioned, not the nuclear content. This is an um, interesting finding for me. K927, they all most of them are located in periphery, but not exactly the same position in histone content. Here, no red color, no red color, but K9, here. So somehow we can say that um, histone K9 methylene 3 is highly involved in histone content in nuclear foci, but in 27 methylation, they are highly involved in lamin associated rep repression of the gene. And in case of K9 isolation, dramatically you know, not detected in histone content. Red one, you can see, exactly this, blank, which means no detected in histone K9 isolation in histone content. Exactly here, same. So depending on the position, uh, we, we can, uh, they are differently behave. So yeah, this is uh, our reference. So how they, yeah, when they find some something, how they link them together? Let's start from this. An increase of histone 3 k 9 methylene 3 marked histone content suggests that there should be decrease in histone 3 k 9 isolation that marks euchromatin content, since these modifications are occurring at the same residue. It was indeed observed that there was a decrease in histone 3 k 9 isolation level in response to force. So they reasoned that histone k 9 methylene 3 isolation they they happening in the same site. So anyhow, they should interact each other. Something increasing means something decreasing. But when I asked this question to Professor Shim, he said, not 100%. Mm, but maybe this is their description. But they, it's not very easy to say which one is involved in the other. Maybe theoretically, we can say that they are independently action, but somehow people think they are entangle, interact each other, but not easy to find. So taken together, our observation indicate that compressive force induced chromatin condensation is measured especially due to the evident change at histone 3 k 9 residue by decreasing isolation, increasing methylation. For H3K9 residue to be trimethylated, we they need rider methyl transferase, such as SUV. It's important residue to be unmodified. Why? This, especially this SUV, uh, 
Mono and dimethylation were found to significantly impair the ability of SUB39, which means SUB39H1 is highly involved in trimethylation from the di to tri, not mono to di. So it is clear that histone content to increase in size, the first step that is crucial is the remo removal of the acetylation marks, which are characteristic of the euchromatin on the neighboring h 3 k residue. So they reason that somehow for actioning this uh, methylation, methylation is enhanced, h 3 k 9 a methylation residue should be uh, should be not changed. So another acetylation is firstly involved. So for H3K9 residue, acetylation is detected by H3K9 acetylation mark, and then they are facilitated by the histone deacylase. So therefore, they investigate histone deacylase are involved in this process in the next section. So this is their description why they going to the H dot because maybe for action in this metal transferase successfully K9 metal 3 should be not changed. They are formed. So another acetylation is firstly involved. For acetylation involved, H dot is first choice for the cell. So they reason like that. H stack somehow up in nucleus, so deacetylated. So while they are deacetylated, H3K9 acetylation 3 is down because they are deacetylated. And then at the, at the moment, SUV rider is mostly involved, so they can make more K9 methylation 3. So, and then ha, I just find this SUV39H1 shuttling. In case of macrophage, interestingly, uh, when they have normal status, uh, some of them SUV inside nucleus, or some of them they are positioned in the outside of the cell membrane, and then they physically inhibit this uh, microbacterium bacilli, and then they are easily uptaken this bacilli, and then kill the bacteria. So this is called SUV39H1 mediated. Yeah, something. But when they remove the SUV 39H1, this uh, defensing mechanism is impaired. So cell or macrophage is highly infected by this bacilli. So this rider protein also can go inside the nucleus, can go outside, because anyhow they are involved in methylation. So here, for the macrophage defensing mechanism, so membrane methylation also can be enhanced by this SUBH1, SUB39H1, same protein. And then, as you know, ASTA is they are located in cytoskeleton with the A kappa B complex, and then when they are highly formed affecting, ASTA cannot go back to nucleus, but when this affecting polymerization degraded in monomer, HTAC3 can be free, and then because they have nuclear NLS sequencing can go nucleus, so HTAC3 can go nucleus. So deacylation occur. So let's start our paper. So Shibashanka group, yeah, compressed force induced reversible chromatin condensation and cell geometry dependent transcription response. So they, based on this uh, knowledge, they are using fibronectin micro pattern and then see the fibroblast three hour and then apply the metal nut one hour. And then they are using two different rectangular circle geometry so first finding is DNA content increasing, regardless of geometry. Increase, increase. And then they remove the load, one hour later, decrease. So you can say reversible. Okay? So total DNA content increase and decrease by recovery. 
So, oh, reversible DNA condensation, they saw. Next, they check. Okay, and then what happened to them in epigenetic change? So, they first check K27, K9, because this is well known for repressing the gene, lab, gene expression among the whole histone epigenetic change. So K927 is highly detected in load, and then most of them are peripheral located, not histone content, nuclear foci. But in case of K9, they are exactly the same position in the nuclear foci, and then also their intensity is increasing in the load. Isolation, decreasing. So they found, oh, histone epigenetic change occur. Figure one, DNA content change. Figure two, epigenetic change. So how they link together? So for that, they are think about maybe HDAC3 should be firstly involved in this phenomenon because it should respond very fast because one hour is not enough time. Maybe enough time, but it's not, not enough time to make new protein or new something, transcription. So maybe existing protein can play action. So one of them is HTAC3. Because before this manuscript, HTAC3 already involved in the shuttling the nucleus. So when they check HTAC3 in the control group, they can see some HTAC3 also located in the cytoplasm. But after loading, most of them are disappear from cytoplasm and then deposit in the nucleus. Oh. And then this is the same cell. So as you can see, this DNA is also number decreasing but size increasing, right? Hmm. And then they, this cell pretreated with TSA, HDAC inhibitor. Hmm. Uh, HDAC inhibitor action. This is a similar action to the that they can change the DNA. So in the presence of TSA, yeah, they show like this. And then when they remove the HDAC3 by the siRNA, so normal, the chromatin condensation is enhanced, but when they remove the HDAC3, this enhancing difference is a little bit shrinked, right? Also, they are enhancing, but because they cannot 100% remove the HDAC3, maybe 60% they mentioned. So this reduction, this may be two times, but maybe 50%. So somehow, they found decreasing of the chromatin condensation. And then in case of the TSA treated, control and then loading, they should be enhanced, but because HDAC3 is inhibited by TSA, so no change. And then here, they, they check the post-MRC. As you know, post-MRC is a mild light chain postpolation for actioning the actin filament movement. So, so there is one. And then instead of on tra traction force measurement, people using a lot this post-MRC as a marker of cell power. So in case of control, post-MRC level is high. But in case of loading, they are disappear. So somehow we feel like, or maybe when we induce the load, maybe cell can have more power. But contrary, they show decreasing of post mercy. So actin also decreasing in the loading because it's more stretch and thick fiber, but not many. And then certain empty side also you can detect. And then post mercy level or decreasing. And then they want to link the post MRC and HDAC3. So post MRC decreasing and and I mean, affecting when they are uh, thickly polymerized here, but somehow they are loosening affecting here. 
and the vendor link is tax three here. So this is, as you know, why is a mechanical transaction pathway to regulate post PMC. So when Y is treated, post PMC level is decreasing. So they observe without any loading, only uh, post PMC inhibitor Y is treated, as you can see, more similar pattern, more condensed, and then nuclear foci, number decreasing but area enhanced. So without any physical factor, they prove their concept when they regulate the post PMC this histone modification change. Um, only they detect DNA content. So on the right panel, this is their quantification. So ASAC3 level also, yeah, this is uh, loading, but with Y is without loading, they just treat the Y, and also they can see ASAC3 intensity is going up, which means they are starting start to deacetylate the nucleus and then make them more condensed heterochromatin structure and then chromatin condensation also mm, similarly they can see and then uh, of they collaborate shanway group so they are making this uh, arbitrary simulation so control they suggest but based on their finding, nuclear height is 0.8 micrometer, and then nuclear pressure 0.5 kilopascal. And then when load is, is applied, nuclear height is dream, shrinked, right? But 2D position area doesn't change. But interestingly, from the previous paper, when they are loading, cell are loaded, nuclear pressure is decreasing. This is a very mm, interesting for me. I feel like when load is, loading is applied, maybe nuclear, they have to resist a lot. So they should, and then they also condense. So maybe they making more pressure, but contrary, they mentioned nuclear pressure is decreasing. Because well, when they are activated, Euclid structure should be there. From Euclid structure, they can show repulsive force from nucleus. But when they are condensed, they are already condensed. So nuclear pressure for outside is decreasing. They mention like that. And then actin filament also well formed in control, but somehow loading upper part, apical part is gone, gone. But the bottom part still there, but apical actin is gone. This is some typical finding they observed in the previous GSTEC images. And then from this uh, basic parameter, kilopascal height, and then actin structure, they suggest this uh, contractility and then stiffness of the cell. Contractility, which is uh, cell power, is high in normal, but less in this loading cell. And then along with stiffness, same manner, decreasing in the cell. So in contrary to our thinking, under loading pressure, cell stiffness decreasing, and then nuclear stiffness decreasing, and the actin is less formed. And then uh, they do some RNA sequencing or microarray, and then they try to find the general global change of the gene. So anyhow, when you compare this uh, loading circular loading and rectangular loading, uh, gene expression, um, they, are they are different between the two groups. I cannot exactly understand the G-score, but they mention like something change. Maybe positively they are changed and negative also change. So some global change is detected. And the post-population pol 2 is RNA polymerizing protein, so which are highly involved in euchromatin structure. So RNA polymerization from the DNA to mRNA, this is highly detected in control compared to load. Load, they are decreasing this intensity, which means 
어, RNA polymerization, the marker of the e u c h r o m a t i n gene, gene activation is decreasing in loading. And then, this is our friend, MRTFA. They also check. MRTFA is uh, also decreasing in the loading group. Because, mm. yeah, according to this here, uh, MRTFA, so originally uh, they are <coughs> involved in monomer of the actin, and then when they uh, when they when they have less effect information, which means a uh, global monomer is more MRTFA is localized in cytoplasm, and then low inside of the nucleus. So this action of the MRTFA, and then here. They show this MRTFA is more less located in nucleus, which means more located in cytoplasm. So when you look at this, um, MRTFA here detect a lot in nucleus, but here the MRTFA level is decreasing in nucleus. So which means MRTFA is more located in cytoplasm, or not inside of nucleus. So this G panel is uh, laid to some what is that? Target gene late late epigenetic change. So they found ah so G this H means uh, this G is globular transcriptome. H is quiescent quiescent gene. Related to heterochromatin, and then this is a proliferation gene. So, prefer and so quiescent gene and proliferation gene is same. General con generally, they match it their finding. Loading, quiescent gene is increasing, red and green color. So they are suppressed. But in the active base proliferation gene, decreasing in loading, which means they will not proliferate. Not all, but generally, they show like that. And then they try to do some bioinformatics. So some are co changed, some are not changed, but they only show something change. Yeah, and then they categorize shape dependent, low dependent, and geometry non, -spe non specific, such as specific. So from their four group, they can try to understand which kind of gene is especially depending on the loading, depending on the geometry, but not depending on them. Mm, but they didn't find the exact certain mechanism here. So this is end of this paper. Mm. I feel like even though they publish in MBOC, but their inside contents is very deep. And then they try to say something. Mm. So I think this paper is very meaningful for us. Actually, here I cannot exactly understand this MRTFA now. Why? Mm.